Hi, everybody. Welcome to the magic of diamonds, diamond secrets revealed. So today we're going to be talking about synthetic diamonds and how they're going to affect our future. So this is a big topic that not a lot of people talk about. And I thought that it was really important to um, get you knowledgeable about synthetic diamonds so that it's not a scary thing, right? So knowledge is power. So as a society, we've grown very comfortable with buying replicas that look and feel like the real thing since it costs less and no one can really tell the difference, right? Uh, you buy replica purses, like coach purses, uh, designer replica designer jewelry, replica watches, you know, who doesn't have a fake Rolex? Uh, so they're really great fun to wear and sport around to make us look and feel great, get that luxury feeling without spending so much money, right? But a lot of us may think there ain't nothing like the real thing, baby, right? You know how the saying goes. So is all this true for natural diamonds versus man-made diamonds? Well, today we're going to uncover the mystery of synthetic diamonds, uh, what they are, how they're made, and how they can affect you and your pocketbook, right? So that you're not getting um, you're not getting the wrong thing. So now let's learn about diamond's main competition, that synthetic diamond. And I want you all to remember that this is not a fake and it's not a simulant, right? So it's not something that just looks like a diamond. So what is a synthetic? Synthetic diamonds are grown in a laboratory and have essentially the same chemical composition. So diamonds are made out of carbon, so that pure element of carbon. So, so is synthetic diamonds. It has the same crystal structure. So diamond has a cubic crystal structure. So does synthetic diamond. And this yields the same physical and optical properties. So the same sparkle, the same hardness, the same um, dispersion, you know, those colored rainbow effects that natural diamonds have. So <clears throat> they'll look and test the same as natural. It'll have also the same uh, coloring as diamonds do, especially now, but it will not have the same clarity since the growing process is different, since it's not created in nature. So we'll talk about that a little later. But the main difference is the creation of diamond versus synthetic diamonds. So synthetic diamonds are created by man in a controlled environment, so in a laboratory where they control the heat and the pressure and they um, they supply the carbon or the elements or they create carbon versus natural diamonds which are a rarity and a treasure from earth and it's grown and crystallized over millions and even billions of years uh, in the mantle of the earth which is located 75 to 100 miles below the surface and they can only grow when the environment is ideal. So it ha will have the correct element, so carbon has to be there. Hi, Brenda. It will have the appropriate heat, so the, the temperature has to be optimal, and it will have the appropriate pressure uh, to form these valuable beauties. And this is diamond's optimal environment, and without it, you won't have a diamond growing. So you need all of this to come together at the same time for a diamond to grow, for a diamond to be nurtured and to create a full crystal. And to me, the formation of gemstones that all of these elements have to be ideal for this to grow is really awe-inspiring and really why diamonds are so precious and so rare. Really why gemstones are so precious and so rare because <clears throat> nature is supplying all of this. It's not a human being that's going to the store or <laughs> creating all of this, right? So if natural diamonds are so great, why make a synthetic? Like everything rare and expensive, Humans have a need to explore how they can copy the real thing 
and of course pay less. So the first synthetic diamond was created in the 1950s for industrial uses by companies like General Electric. So the company that makes the light bulb. So because of diamonds property to dispel heat quickly, so diamonds are considered a heat sink. These synthetic diamonds were used only for industrial and commercial purposes. In 1970s, researchers at General Electric created the first synthetic diamond in a quality and size that could be faceted. So they can actually cut it into a uh, gem material. But it still wasn't a good quality for the jewelry trade. So GE didn't approach gem quality until the 1970s and 1980s. Uh, and they began with colored diamonds. And at that time, they couldn't really get a, a true colorless diamond. So <clears throat> there wasn't really much of a demand or much of an interest. They were used mainly in like fashion jewelry or jewelry that you see on QVC or things like that. This way you have like, uh, I don't wanna say low quality jewelry, but low value jewelry or less expensive jewelry. So how are th synthetics uh, even made? Well, while natural diamonds may take billions of years to form and to come to the Earth's surface, so diamonds usually come uh, through a volcanic surface and they're attached to a host rock, and it's located in certain areas around the Earth uh, where these conditions are ideal for diamonds to grow. So synthetics can be grown in a matter of weeks. So you don't have to wait billions of years for your diamond to grow. You can wait a couple of weeks. And it uses one of two processes. Um, so one process is called HPHT, and the second is called CVD. So let me uh, share my screen. So this is the first process, and it's called high pressure, high temperature. And this simulates the crushing force of the earth by applying high temperature and high pressure to dissolve carbon into a diamond seed. So they use a little uh, seed made of natural diamond so that it can mimic the conditions of natural diamond formation in the earth. So the result is a distinctive crystal shape that is for the most part, um, pretty close to natural. Uh, they usually form like octahedral uh, type crystals that is similar to natural diamond crystals. And they can be colored or colorless and if needed can also be irradiated to make fancy colors or to remove color from yellow synthetic crystals to make them whiter. So this next one is called chemical vapor deposition, or CVD. And this newer technique, which is uh, like a 3D printer approach, and it uses a piece of carbon that settles in layers on a diamond seed. So for this one, usually they use a synthetic diamond seed. Um, like I said, it does have the same crystal structure, so it doesn't matter. So the synthetic diamonds are grown in an apparatus that uses moderate temperatures, so not that high temperature, and very low pressure. And they form this in a vacuum chamber. And the CVD process involves heating a mixture of hydrocarbon gas, such as methane and hydrogen. And this releases carbon atoms, so they're actually creating carbon. So. <clears throat> they're using this carbon vapor and this gas to settle onto the cooler, typically square-shaped synthetic diamond plate. Um, and it kind of mimics a photocopier. So it keeps putting layers of the same uh, pattern or the same atomic structure. And then the result is more of a square shape or a tabular synthetic diamond crystal that they can then cut a gemstone out of. So these synthetics are often lab grown. Uh, so 
I'm sorry, these synthetics are often call, called lab grown or lab created in the trade. And again, they're not simulants. Um, so they do have that same chemical, physical, and optical properties as natural diamonds do. So now that the process of creating synthetics has been improved, there are many more synthetic diamond producers that have emerged in the past five years. And these companies have been able to create stones that can, could compete with natural diamonds in size, color, and clarity. And this means competition for the most valuable category of jewelry, which is the engagement ring. So. Uh, let me just show you all of the different colors that the diamonds come in. You can see that they come in fancy colors and they can come in colorless. So how can we separate lab grown uh, from natural diamond? Well, you really can't and I really can't either to tell you the truth. So in the past, you can only tell conclusively with highly specialized equipment and trained staff in a gemological laboratory that know how to use this uh, highly um, specialized equipment. I actually worked for a diamond lab where we had uh, this equipment and it was huge. It, it took a whole uh, corner of the laboratory just for this machinery to be able to tell a natural uh, diamond versus a synthetic diamond. So you really needed to know how to use this machinery because it was huge and it was expensive. Uh, but now there are a few testers that jewelers can buy to protect themselves against a lab grown slipping into their parcels of natural diamonds that they order from dealers. So these testers uh, check for fluorescence. So a lab grown will fluoresce red whereas natural diamond usually fluoresces blue, white, and yellow. So those are the typical fluorescence of natural. Uh, not a lot of diamonds fluoresce red, if any. I don't think any do. But um, another thing it tests for is <clears throat> something called type 2A. So diamonds come in four types or grow as four types, and 2A is extremely rare in natural. So if they find if one of these testers finds that it's 2A, you want to get it double checked by a laboratory for 100% certainty that it is a synthetic. So identification of these synth synthetics are a big concern for jewelers as well as consumers due to the difference of value and price. So no jeweler wants to misrepresent their jewelry and no consumer wants to be misled, right? So what's the answer? How do you avoid this? Well, most of the manufacturers of these lab grown diamonds are very responsible in the disclosure of their product. And in larger stones, they'll actually inscribe on the girdle um, lab grown or they'll put their brand on the girdle of the diamond for identification. And often these diamonds, the larger ones, uh, or these synthetic diamonds will have a certificate from a gemological lab uh, with not only the identification that it is lab grown, uh, but also the four C's. So it'll have the carat weight, the cut, the clarity, the color of the synthetic diamond and whatever's inscribed on the girdle. So the best thing that you can do though is to only deal with reputable diamond dealers and reputable jewelers if you want to make 100% sure that you're buying natural diamonds or if you're buying a synthetic diamond. It's up to you, your choice. So why are these man-made diamonds becoming so popular for jewelry and engagement rings? Well, there are three big reasons why uh, they're becoming so popular. The first they are a synthetic with the same exact properties of a diamond. So you're not missing out on any sparkle or beauty like you would with a cubic zirconia or other simulants that will scratch and wear after time. Second is the price. So they're approximately 40 to 50% less than the natural diamond, depending on size, color, clarity, things like that. Um, and <clears throat> So uh, I was going to say that, 
you know, in the diamond world, they tell you that you, you should spend two months salary, but with COVID and everything like that, maybe people have been out of work and not, you know, having two months salary. So it is a nice alternative if you can't um, afford a natural diamond. Uh, right now, synthetic diamonds are expensive to create in the laboratory, but since demand is increasing, supply is too. So this brings down the cost and it's getting lower and lower the more in demand a uh, synthetic diamond is. So, so the more people buy synthetics, the cheaper it will be. Third is that they are very attractive to millennials and now Generation Z, who together are the main purchasers of diamonds for engagement rings. And this is mainly because lab-grown diamonds are environmentally and politically friendly. They leave less of a carbon footprint to Mother Earth. And there is no worry about your diamond being conflict-free conflict free or not, right? Because they're made in a lab. <laughs> you don't have people from across the globe, you know, trying to smuggle it or anything like that. So this sounds great, right? All of this sounds great. So why wouldn't you get one? Well, the biggest drawback is that they have no resale value and the value is decreasing as prices decrease. Another drawback is like everything else that is replicated. Um, do you really want uh, something that is made in a lab, or uh, do you want something created by this miraculous earth? Um, so really, that is up to you, and material things are valuable if you as the consumer value them. So it really depends on what your values are and what you consider important when, when you make a purchase. So you may be asking by now, how will synthetic diamonds affect the future? So a very small percentage of lab-grown diamonds are used for jewelry purposes. Right now, they are more useful for advancing technology and industry. So according to research, lab-grown diamonds are a very important material to improve our way of living with many industrial uses that will be more and more diamond-based and is believed to reduce our carbon footprint by 10% or more. So this is a great thing to help against our control of global warming and any kind of negative effects happening to our Mother Earth. And that's really important. So because diamond has a lower coefficient of friction, so like I said, they're used for heat sink, um, heat sinks, um, then metal. Diamond coated parts are increasingly used in all kinds of systems where friction drags on performance, including cars, planes, and turbines. So they're used in this kind of technology. And according to automaker Nissan, diamond co coating can reduce overall engine friction by 25%. And in other areas, diamonds' low friction, durability, and biological inertness makes it ideal for orthopedic medical uh, devices, such as joint replace replacements. So how, how many of us are going to need a new hip or a new knee replacement? Uh, I think I'm going to need a new hip pretty soon <laughs> from all my walking that I've been doing during uh, the pandemic here. <laughs> but. How cool is that, that you can have something diamond inside of you? Also, lab diamonds, uh, lab, di lab created diamonds are being tested to replace discs in your spine. And they're doing these kind of clinical trials in Europe. And right now, the main medical uses are for lasers. Um, this is a picture of them using uh, synthetic diamond for lasers or surgical scalpels, which take advantage of flawless synthetic diamonds, since a lot of th synthetic diamonds are flawless. So you'll also see lab diamonds in your everyday life being used for screens, wires, and circuit boards in our cell phones, as well as part of your laptop and computers. And due to the properties of diamonds, synthetic uh, diamonds are significantly more efficient and better than silicon in handling high voltages and high frequency. So electrons move more freely through diamond than silicon, and diamond is far more 
thermally conductive than any other known material. So it's believed that lab-grown diamonds will replace silicon in not only our electronics and our computer processors, but will be used to power transformers, electric vehicles, satellites, and cell phone towers. So everything that we use in our everyday life. So in industry, lab-grown diamonds are definitely the wave of the future, and they're going to be earning about $26 billion this year alone. So right now, a small uh, fraction is in jewelry, with the rest making more of a profit in all aspects of industry. So how will it affect the future of the jewelry industry? So like everything else, this is the time for jewelers to pivot to survive. Popularity of the times and human priorities are always changing. There have been synthetics of other gemstones. You may have seen synthetic ruby, synthetic sapphire, synthetic emerald. And this uh, has been ever since the 1800s. That, and th more and more, they've become widely accepted. Uh, a lot of birthstone jewelry has synthetics in it to make it more affordable. Um, so people accept all of these colored stones that are synthetic. So <clears throat> the future generation uh, will determine how acceptable lab-grown diamonds will become for jewelry. So I'm personally old school and I love natural diamonds, but I have seen synthetic diamond engagement rings and you really can't tell the difference. If you need something more affordable with the same look, then a synthetic is a better choice than any of the other diamond lookalikes like cubic zirconia and synthetic moissanite. Somebody was asking about synthetic moissanite. I would choose a synthetic diamond over synthetic moissanite for sure, in my opinion. Synthetic moissanite has way too much sparkle and rainbow colors and things like that. Um, so you can kind of tell that it's a synthetic diamond with a, a synthetic uh, moissanite. With a, with a synthetic diamond, you get that same look as diamond. So ultimately, the future of lab-grown diamonds uh, for jewelry is up to you. But it does look promising for lab-grown since, according to studies right now, nearly 70% of millennials are considering buying a lab-grown alternative due to their beauty, lower cost, and friendliness to humanity and the earth. So just remember, you will get the look. But if you care about value and selling, uh, you won't get that from man-made. So if you want to learn more about why uh, you, you shouldn't sell your diamonds or your jewelry, uh, I do have a, um, a workshop that I did that's on my website that I created a blog, and you can watch the video. It's on Rejuvenated Design's website in the blog area, and you can learn the seven revealing secrets you need to know about selling your jewelry. Uh, very informative. So. Today's the last day of April, so tomorrow is May, and uh, we will be talking about emeralds. So happy last day of April. I hope everybody had a great birthday month, a great diamond month. Uh, in the blogs, I also have my videos about um, diamonds that I haven't done in the group. So if you want to catch those, you can do you can see those there. And I hope you all have a great weekend and talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.